Morris Youth and Family Program, featuring inspirational and informative teaching concepts geared toward youth, young adults, and families. From author, international speaker, youth and family specialist, Pastor Dave Burroughs. Continuing on the relationship series, but well, we're going to be talking about relationships as it relates to teenagers and young adults. Now, this is not exclusively for teenagers and young adults, but this is the, that's the focus of it. So, keys to effective relationships for teens and young adults. That's our focus this morning. As I mentioned, what we are teaching here, the young people are also receiving upstairs in TYC, but they're receiving it in a little different language, and they're receiving it on their level. They don't need to, to, to be learning about marriage and, you know, marital problems and all of those kind of things. They need to deal with the issues that relate to them. Now, one of the resources that I'm going to be using in this presentation is a book called Sex and Dating that's also on CD and DVD. You see it up on the screen. At the end of the service today, we're going to have a table in the back, and I want to encourage you, if you're a parent or a young person, if you haven't gotten a copy of this book before, get it, because it, a lot of things that I'm going to talk about today are in this book. So I would definitely want to encourage you to get that book. There's a number of other youth resources that, that's going to be available, but that book I want to see on specially. Another one that I want to mention is Sex 101. And this is 101 things that especially young people, youth and young adults need to know about sex. But in the beginning, we want to start with the foundation, and the foundation is the Word. So we want to get to our foundation scripture, which is 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 1. And here's what it says. It says, Finally, brothers, we have instructed you how to live in order to please God. Everybody say, please God. And I believe that our objective in life is to please God. I want you to raise your hand if your objective in life is to please God. Raise your hand. Okay. So I have a lot of people in here in agreement with me. So we, we see the scripture says, if you want to please God, this is how you live. It says, as in fact you are living now, we ask you and we urge you. Everybody say urge you. Urge means to prod along to encourage strongly. So the Apostle Paul is saying, if you want to please God, I urge you and plead with you in the Lord Jesus to do this more and more. For you know what instructions we gave you by the authority of the Lord Jesus. It is God's will. Everybody say, it is God's will. That you should be sanctified, that you should avoid sexual immorality. Sanctified means set apart. Different from the rest adhering to a separate code. So it says we're supposed to be sanctified that we should avoid sexual immorality. We live in a world today that doesn't encourage us to, to avoid sexual immorality. In fact, it encourages every day. Encourages us every day. When we turn our television screens on, years ago we used to have programs like the Cosby Show and uh, the, the Urkel program. What is the Sunday matter? And, you know, there were issues about family, and people talked about things, and, you know, I mean, you still had a lot of bad programs, but you had at least a lot more good programs. But now, when I turn on my television, I see the bad girls club. How to be a nasty, dirty club, which is basically all it's all about. Then you have another program that shows young people how to get drunk and act stupid. Jersey Shore. And then you, the list could go on and on. But there's very little in our world today encourage, encouraging us to avoid sexual immorality. But I don't care if the whole world is immoral. That is still not God's standard, and we are not supposed to bow as people who say we are from the kingdom of God. We're not supposed to bow to whatever the standard the world presents and tries to force on us. I don't even care if the church goes in the wrong direction. If the bishop, the pastor, the priest, whatever they do, it still doesn't matter. It still doesn't negate God's word. And this is God's command. This is his instruction that he said, this is what you're supposed to do. He says that each of you should learn to control. Everybody say control. 
We live in a world that doesn't believe in self-control anymore. We believe in self-indulgence. Do whatever you like, with whoever you like, at any time you like. But the Apostle Paul says, if you want to please God, you're supposed to learn to control your own body. It's amazing to me how many people have lost control of their own bodies. It's unfortunate that pastors and some leaders and others in our world today are not even setting an example for the church. And what's disturbing to me about what's happening in our world today with some pastors and some leaders is that they commit these sins that the Bible explicitly prohibits. And not only do they commit the sins, they prey upon their congregations. And then when they are found out, the next day they're in business just like ain't nothing happened. Now I tell you, something is wrong with that. If the world cannot look to the church to be accountable, then we have totally lost order. It says that we're supposed to, you're supposed to learn to control his or her own body or learn to live with his own wife. Everybody say own wife. We live in a world where people don't know how to live with their own wife. They want to live with somebody else's wife and then theirs too. But the Bible says, get your own. Get your own husband, get your own wife. It says, or learn how to acquire a wife. So if you don't have one, instead of fooling with somebody else's own, just learn how to acquire a wife. Do the right thing to find your own wife or your own husband. It says, in a way that is honorable, and I underline this, and I want to read this, I want us to read this together. Not in passionate lust like the heathen. Now, this is the Bible, and this is, this, these are instructions from the Bible. So God says, this is how you're supposed to live, but you are not supposed to live in passionate lust like the heathen. So there's an indication there that it's natural for the heathen, heathen to live in passionate lust. But it's not natural to you once you've received Christ and you've adhered to the kingdom standard. It's not natural for you to act the same way that, that, that they act. It says, who do not know God, and that in this, in this matter no one should wrong his brother or take advantage of him, the Lord will punish men for all such sins, as we have already told you and warned you. For God did not call us to be impure, but to live a holy life. Everybody say, live a holy life. I know that's not very much in vogue today. It's not very much in fashion, but it's still the truth. And my job is not to entertain you. My, not, my job is not to tell you things you like to hear. My job is to tell you the truth. Because it works for me. And if it works for me, it can work for anybody. <laughs> It says, therefore, he who rejects this instruction does not reject man, but God, who gives you his Holy Spirit. So God is saying that if you reject these instructions, you're not just rejecting man, you're rejecting God. So young people, old people, everybody in between, take heed to these instructions. Anytime you get confused, you don't know what to do. If you're in a situation, you see somebody else's wife, and you're not sure what to do, go pick up that verse. And they'll set you back in order. Parents, when you see your children going to sit, just read them that verse. I don't care whether they want to hear it or not, it's the truth. So we live in a world of epic failure when it comes to relationships. Divorce is now more normal than marriage because they say more than somewhere in the neighborhood of one out of two, or slightly more than one out of two marriages end in divorce. So divorce is becoming the norm. Young people die in and out of relationships with abandon. Because that's what they see on TV. They, that's what they see popularized. There's no need for commitment. They, they have a new terminology now. I don't know how many of you are aware of this terminology, but it's called friends with benefits. How many of you heard that terminology before? I see a, only, only some people raising their hands. Well, y'all got to get up at the time, God. <laughs> friends with benefits. Friends with benefits is an interesting concept. You know what friends with benefits mean? When you hear young people say it, when you hear the music on television program, I understand there's even a movie coming out, out very soon about it. Friends with benefits means that you are my friend. We don't have any relationship in terms of in, um, um, commitment or anything like that. But you're my friend, and 
I can get text whenever I want. There's no strings attached. They call it friends with benefits. God calls it sin. <laughs> God calls it fornication. We are dressing up sin in new terminologies. And we are creating our own standards. We are trying to create our own God, really. Because when you can tell God what to do, you don't have God anymore. you got your own God. So this is the world for young people. And you know, in this type of world, it's easy to lose relationships. It's easy to lose focus on what are real, healthy, godly relationships. But I want to bring it to our attention today what godly relationships really are. Today, there's a tremendous misunderstanding about love and relationships. Love is often confused with sex, debauchery, lasciviousness. In fact, when you hear songs today and they sing it about Love, they're not really thinking about love. They're thinking about sex. They have a song called, Let Me Love You. And it doesn't mean let me love you. It doesn't mean let me take care of you, marry you, let's get a house together and, and you know, do all of the right things. It means let me have sex with you. But the interesting thing about it is that sex is not love. If sex was about love, the most loved person in the world would be the prostitute. But prostitutes get a lot of sex, but I don't see a smile on their face. I don't see them happy. I don't see them. I just love what I do. <laughs> they feel abused. They feel depressed. Because sex is not love. You see, dogs are designed to have sex with our love, but not humans. The interesting thing about it is that dogs do not make long-term commitments. You don't see a dog go one day and say, you know, baby, um, I got you pregnant last week. We had five puppies. And so, um, you know, next week I'm coming around, I'm going to the garbage, and I'm going to dig out some Kentucky. I'm going to bring you a Kentucky snack. And I'm going to drag some clothes off the line, and I'll, I'll make sure that they cover it in the, you know, in the winter when it's, when it's cold or whatever. Dogs days in a long-term relationship. A dog is, all I want to do is zoom, 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 on the boom, boom. That's it. And then he's gone. Dogs don't have ceremonies. They don't get together and say, you know, do you take this lawful wedded fight out <laughs> to be your husband? No, no, there ain't no conversation. They don't even ask no questions. All they do is they, they look. And they feel the heat and they'll be like, boy, I'm going for this one. And you know, they don't even come one at a time. You see a whole group, you, you, you see, around the corner, you see 15 dogs going after one woman. <laughs> but you know what? Our humans are acting like that today. Sex does not produce love, but love can produce sex. Love can produce very good sex, contrary to popular opinion. They almost, they almost make it sound like the only sex that's good is indiscriminate sex. But the best sex comes out of a love relationship. And I'm speaking as an authority on this matter. I have lots of indiscriminate sex, but I also have lots of sex within the context of a love relationship and a marriage, and I say, it's better on this side of things. I'll tell you something about sex. You know, people say sex feels good. That's true, but so does crack cocaine. 